Four. Matthew 13, verse 44. The words of our Lord Jesus as follows. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field. The which when a man has found, he hides, and for joy thereof goes and sells all that he has, and buys that field. Yeah. Again, the kingdom of heaven, like unto a merchant man, seeking goodly pearls, who, when he has found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. I, I want to share with you today a message based on this passage. I've titled the message, Wanted Kingdom Men. Wanted Kingdom Men. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Matthew chapter 13. If, if heaven had a newspaper, it might be called the Kingdom Inquirer. Or it might be called the Kingdom Daily News. <coughs> or the Kingdom Courier Journal. Or the Kingdom Post. In it would be news and information Relating to the kingdom of God. Somebody will say amen. 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 If heaven had a newspaper, <laughs> it would have a finance section. And the finance section would tell about the blessings that God gives to those who faithfully give their time. Amen. Amen. We said it earlier, we'll say it again. You, 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 you really can't be God yes. You just you just can't. So it, it would have a finance section. And I think, I think it might also have a sports section. And in the sports <laughs> section, you would read about how the angels continue to be successful in defeating the red devil. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just tell you how you tell it to me, y'all. <laughs> there, there would also be a one ads section. But this section would have only one listing. And that one listing would be in large, bold print. All right. And that listing would simply read, Wanted Kingdom Men. All right. All right. Let me share with you the definition that Pastor Tony Evans gives for a kingdom man. <laughs> Here's what he says a kingdom man is. A kingdom man is a man who visibly demonstrates the comprehensive rule of God underneath the Lordship of Jesus Christ in every area of his life. Every area. That, that, that's how Tony defines a kingdom man. So would you, would you say that with me? A kingdom man is a man who visibly demonstrates the comprehensive rule of God underneath the Lordship of Jesus Christ in every area of his life. Folks, 
to put it simply, Jesus is Lord of everything. Yeah. And somebody has well said, if he's not Lord of everything, then he's not Lord at all. But he is Lord of everything. In referring to the kingdom of God, here in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus said that the kingdom of God is like a treasure that's hidden in a field which a man has found, he hides, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Now, here's what you got to understand. In the days of the Bible, they didn't have banks. So money you wanted to save, valuables you wanted to save, something that was very fresh to you and you wanted to keep, many times they buried it. Yes. They would just go out into their yard or to a field and they would dig a hole and they would bury it. Yes. So they could keep it and then in case of an emergency, they would go out to where they had buried it and they would get out what they needed. That's what they did. That's how they kept safe as best as they could the things that they valued. If it was jewelry or, or, or money or some other important items, that's how they did it. The problem was, if someone went out and buried something of value but didn't tell anybody, and then that person died, then that stuff would just kind of be laid out there and nobody would ever know where it was until maybe somebody else comes along and says, hey, I'm going to buy that property over there. That looks like that's some good ground for me to plow and, 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 and you know, plant some uh, uh, crop and everything. So I want to buy that property over there. And so what oftentimes happened, it oftentimes happened, was somebody would buy that land and as they would start plowing in the field, that thing that was buried would come up. And all of a sudden, you know, that person might be looking at it and say, wow. Yeah. It could be in a jar or it might be in some other container. There's some money, there's some jewelry. There's really something precious. Or, or, there could be a guy who is just uh, working out in the field. And he comes across something in that field. Now, Jewish law said, if you find it, you can keep it. Right. You didn't have to own the land. <coughs> if you found it, it's yours. Right. Well, Jesus tells the story here of a man here in this parable in Matthew uh, chapter 13, verse 44. That's what Jesus was talking about here when he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that is hidden in a field. And so, the people who had the land, or bought the land, or worked in the land, they would find that treasure, and then they would hide it. They'd dig it somewhere else. And they would hide it to where they know where it was at. And sometimes, they would go and say, you know what, you see that field? Yeah, I'm going to buy that field. You want to buy the field? I'm going to buy it. And, and once they bought the field, of course, they would get the trade back to the I remember one time I was out walking. I found some money. It was just kind of rolled up. And I reached down and I picked it up. $20 bills. Four of them. $80. I put it in my pocket. In this parable, Jesus tells how happy the man was when he found the treasure that was in the field. He was so happy that he sold everything he had in order to buy the field. Because it wasn't so much the field that he was wanting, but it was 
the treasure that was in the field. And I, I think the man probably was thinking, you know what? It might be some more of this stuff there. I'm buying this field right now. And even if it wasn't anymore, he said, at least I got what I got. Listen. When people, when people discover the treasure and the joy of knowing the Lord, everything else pales in comparison. Yeah. You remember the woman at the well? Yeah. She came there to get some water. Yeah. Little did she know that the water she was going to get yes, was going to change her life forever. Amen. And there she was there at the well and she started talking to Jesus and ultimately when the reality hit her of who she was talking to, that she was actually talking to the long promised, the long awaited Messiah. Yes, yes. When she finally realized who she was talking to. Folks, I want you to know when you get on your knees and prayer, you ought to realize who you're talking to. You're talking to the Creator of the universe. The creator of heaven and earth. Yeah. That's who you're talking to. And whatever situation, whatever problem you have, it ain't too hard. That's right. Yes. Yes. It ain't too big for him. He can handle it. Yes, sir. So she got excited. She got so excited. She recognized who it was that she was talking to. She got so excited. She ran into town. And to tell the people about the treasure that she had found. Amen. She said, come on, see me. Yes, yes. Who told me all the things that I've ever done is not this the Messiah. Yes, this man, I think she said, this man, man he different. <laughs> I know a lot of men. Yes, sir. I ain't never known a man just now. He can look at you and he can see clear through to your soul. This man, you got to come and see this man. And that's what she did. She ran into town to tell the people about the treasure that she had found. And so Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is like that. That 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 ultimate treasure that you find. Hallelujah. And that anything and everything you have to do to receive that treasure, that's what you ought to do. All right. Amen. You know, I think about all the money that Steve Jobs had. He couldn't keep death away. Couldn't. Couldn't do it. And I'm going to tell you this, folks. I'd rather go to my grave with a few million than go to hell with a million dollars. Amen. I'm I'd rather go to my grave with a few million than go to hell with a million dollars. Now don't get me wrong. Somebody gave me a million dollars. I'd gladly take it. I'd gladly receive it. But I wouldn't forfeit my soul for something that when it comes time to lay down and die, won't do me any good. It won't do me any good at all. I was at a funeral uh, Friday. Um, this gentleman was a deacon at a church up in Milford. I think he was 92 years old. Wow. But a very faithful, very dedicated servant of God. And I listened as person after person after person stood there.
and just told about the character yes, sir. and the godliness of this man. Yes, sir. And I sat there and I, I just, just, just overjoyed as I thought about the legacy that he left behind. The life that he lived. The testimony that was so easy to see. Yes, yes. That he had embraced the kingdom of heaven. And that his life was all about living for the kingdom of heaven. You see, folks, the kingdoms of this world are only temporary. And they never really give you true satisfaction. They never really do. But you know what? When you embrace that treasure, that, that glorious treasure of a right relationship with God, when you embrace that, when that becomes the master passion of your life, Oh my, glory. how different life is. How glorious life is. How wonderful life is. Whoever the richest man in hell is, <laughs> what good is it? What good is it? Listen, folks, here's what I'm trying to say. Don't let nothing stop you from entering the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Don't let nothing stop you. And, and what it really all comes down to, it really all comes down to this. It all comes down to who are you going to allow to become king of your heart? Isn't that what it comes down to? Who are you going to allow to become king of your heart? You see, Jesus Christ is the king of kings and Lord of lords. The kings of this world, they ain't nothing but temporary. They come and they go. They reign for a short period of time and they gone. Jesus is the one and only <coughs> eternal king. He reigns forever yes. as Lord and King. Amen. You remember when Jesus was on trial, he was brought before the governor of Judea, a fellow named Pilate. And as Jesus stood before Pilate, Pilate asked him this one question. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? That was the question Pilate asked Jesus. And Jesus responded simply but magnificently. Yes, sir. Jesus looked at Pilate and said, My kingdom is not in this world. Yes, sir. What a statement! <laughs> My kingdom! See, Pilate, you and I got two different ideas what a kingdom is. Amen. My kingdom is not of this world. You see, his kingdom is not connected to the earthly political realm. Nor does it have its origin in this evil world system that is in rebellion against God. He reigns. Only in the hearts of those who know him as Savior and Lord. Yes, Amen? Amen? That's how he reigns. Yes, and so the Bible speaks of a time, a time that will soon come, mm -hmm. when Jesus will set up his kingdom on earth. Yes, sir. It's, the Bible calls it the millennial or the thousand year reign yes. of Christ. This thousand year reign of Christ, he will come to earth, set up his kingdom on earth, and guess what? Whoever on this earth that happens to be king or president or any other kind of high official, whoever that is, when the king of king comes, guess what they're going to do? They're going to bow down. Shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord yes. to the glory 
inside the fire. There's only one real true king. And his name is Jesus. That, 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 that's who he is. And everybody one day is going to bow down to him. So, you know what? God is looking for kingdom men. That's what he's doing. God is looking for kingdom men. Men that he can raise up. Men who will have his kingdom at the very center of their lives. Men whose hearts are burning with a desire to do his will and to serve in his kingdom. Men who are willing to boldly proclaim, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's what we're going to do. God is looking for kingdom men. And you know what? A kingdom man is also a man who will serve in any capacity as long as it brings glory to God. Amen. Doesn't matter what it is. He's willing to do whatever he can do as long as it brings glory to God. He'll do whatever it takes to make known the name of the Lord. That's what he'll do. And I pray that as we continue our journey through this campaign, I pray that the Lord will touch each and every heart of each man. And believe me, God is doing that. God really is doing that. Isn't he doing that, fellas? Is he touching our hearts? He's touching our hearts in a marvelous and in a wonderful way. And we're discovering so many glorious, amazing truths about what it means to be a kingdom man. And that's why I like on Tony Evans' book, Kingdom Man, right at the top, it says, every man's dream, every woman's desire. Shut up. Exactly. Isn't that something? Yes. Uh, see, a godly woman wants a kingdom man. That's what they want. And, of course, we already have some wonderful godly women here. And we're praying that God is going to continue to work in the hearts of us that will become kingdom men. And then I'm praying, too, that God is going to send other men so that we might be able to share with them what a kingdom man is and what it takes to be one of those men. That's, that's my prayer. And so, uh, the Lord willing, next week, uh, I'm going to share part two of wanted kingdom men because there are, there are three things that I see that are very crucial and every man should be willing to do. And so, you have to come next week to hear what those are. Uh, but, but the Lord willing, we'll share those three things with you next week. But it is my desire, it is our desire, that we will become the kind of men that give glory to God. That we'll become the kind of men who will lead, who will step out, take a stand for God, and lead in any and every area that God gives us to lead. We're going to do that for his glory. One of the things that Tony Evans very wonderfully brings out in this series is the fact that if you go back to the Garden of Eden, where man fell, where sin came on the scene, if you go back to the Garden of Eden and you read that story there in Genesis, and we've all read it many, many times, and he, he really brought out some very interesting points. And one of the things he said was, you, you, you notice that when Satan comes into the garden, he's 
strikes up the conversation with Eve. All right. Okay. Adam has already told Eve that God has said we can't eat the fruit in the midst of the garden. Can't, we can't do that. He's told her that. She knows that. Satan comes along and he doesn't talk to Adam, but he talks to Eve. And of course, she talks back to him. Now you're in trouble. When you start conversating with the devil, you're in trouble. She starts conversating with him. Now, here's what Tony Evans brings out, then I'm going to be through. Adam is right there with her. He hears the conversation. He sees what's going on. But he don't say nothing. And then Tony brings up the point. You see, man, his silence was devastating. And the silence of men today in the church is still devastating. And that's why God wants to raise up kingdom men. So we won't be silent any longer. And we'll lead by example. And we'll let our light shine so bright that others we see our good works to glorify our God who is in heaven. So I don't know where you are today as a man. I don't know what your heart's desires are as a man. But I do know this. You'll never really be satisfied. You'll never really have joy and true happiness until you become the man that God intended you to be.